Hey everyone, I'm Dave and we're back in the AI kitchen and today I'm pretty excited about what we're cooking. I decided that I wanted to try to figure out some new recipe, have ChatGPT create it from scratch and then we cook it. And you know, the motivation on this one was my marry me chicken. Everyone loves the marry me chicken recipe, uh, which you know, wasn't really mine, but the, the video I did about marry me chicken where I made that is a very good recipe. So I asked ChatGPT to create a recipe that is amazing like marry me chicken, easy to make like marry me chicken, has chicken as a foundation but is a complete flavor departure from marry me chicken that can be its own thing and chat gpt even named it it called it enchanting chicken so we're gonna try to cook it and see if it really is like marry me chicken level and you know maybe we got a new viral hit on our hands so let's get into it it looks like it might rain a little bit how moody it would, it would be kind of nice and moody right if we have rain in the background of our video because i am outside this morning you know is it gonna rain it might rain anyways Onion, we're gonna, what are we gonna do? Dice it, slice it, slice it, not dice it. So there's a difference, guys. That doesn't seem sharp at all, does it? Look at this. It's like, oh, an onion, that's impossible to cut for me. <laughs> I'm gonna need a new knife, hold on. Or sharpen this one. All right, let's see if this guy is sharp enough to cut an onion. Ah, that's what's supposed to happen, guys. That's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to go through the onion. How do I, how do you really slice an onion? I don't even know. That's not why we're here, though. We're not doing onion slicing tutorials. Although, I probably should watch them. That onion looks pretty bad. Look at that. Ugh. Wait, can you see it? Let me zoom in. Extreme close-up. Ah. Remember Wayne's World? Look at that thing. It looks pretty nasty. I don't know if I have any other onions. It could still maybe be salvaged if we kind of just cut off the icky bits. What would you do? I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because I don't have any other onions, so just get rid of the junky looking parts. Still doesn't look amazing. That's what happens when you get your produce from Walmart. That's, I think that this part looks okay. So that other stuff we're gonna get rid of. I need a trash can. I don't know if I love the whole sliced onion idea. I feel like probably dice would be better, but do what it tells us to do. Uh, and that next thing would be to slice dice mince. Two cloves of garlic. I really gotta stop getting my veggies at Walmart though. Comment down below. Where do you go for your veggies? Probably like Publix. Publix is a place to go, I bet. Or shop. What is the other one? Winn-Dixie, is that one good? Which one's better, Publix or Winn-Dixie? Or Aldi, there's an Aldi in my town too. I could just go there. I got the Aldi's like ready-made pizza last night. You know how like they have the take and bake pizza? Like when you walk in on Aldi's? I took it home and I baked it and it was like a thin crust with sausage and pepperoni and et cetera, et cetera. It was actually really good. And it was like $5, so. It's like cheaper than a, what is that frozen one? DiGiorno, a way, way better than a DiGiorno. So there you go, there's my Aldi's ad, not sponsored. <laughs> ah, there we go. So diced minced garlic, good. We then wanna take a cup of cherry tomatoes and slice them in half, just like that. I think there's such a thing as a grape tomato too. Oh, this is, any anytime I say something dumb like that, I always think, oh, I should remind people, I'm not a professional chef, guys. I'm just out here cooking for fun and taking you along for the ride. And you know, if I can cook it, you can cook it because I have no cooking training or anything like that. I've never had a cooking TV show, which you know, a lot of the uh, cooks on YouTube have like big cooking histories. I don't have that. I'm just a guy who likes to cook. Not that great at it, but I feel like it's, you know, something relatable. A lot of people probably cook like me, but that's what I was saying. I think there's grape and cherry tomatoes. I don't know if there's really a difference. I wonder if you could use either for this. Uh, let's see, can I offload some of this? Cause I have to slice some uh, horrible looking bell peppers too. Next, let me get like a bowl. Two bell peppers diced. That's not really how I normally, wait, how do you do a bell pepper? You cut it like this maybe? No, that seems wrong. Although this would make it easier to pull out the innards, the little seeds. Yeah, it was kind of functional, kind of worked. Anyways, two bell peppers. So enchanting chicken, guys, what do you think? You think it's gonna be a success? You think it's gonna be as good as Mary Me Chicken? I don't know, I feel like, so here's the thing. When I first saw the recipe, I was like, this isn't gonna be as good as Mary Me Chicken. It doesn't have like cream or any of that stuff that makes Mary Me Chicken like such a staple around my house. We still make it all the time. And I think a lot of you guys make it again and again too, because it's just an easy recipe that's really good. Well. The only thing that I thought, okay, this could be like a redeeming quality. This could make it good is that it has an ingredient that I love. And I know it's a divisive ingredient. So a lot of you might hear this and be like, ew, I'm out. Balsamic vinegar. It has balsamic vinegar, which I am a lover of balsamic vinegar. I will like take, and this sounds very bougie of me. as my kids say bougie. I will take some balsamic vinegar and put it on like some avocado toast. Fancy Dave. <laughs> 
And uh, 20 year old Dave would have never said such a thing, but it's true, it's really good. You know, I can't deny that it's really good. And so the fact that balsamic vinegar is in this, cherry tomatoes, it makes me think, I don't even know if there's any cheese, but there probably should be. Then we're talking like, you know, what are those like burrata, tomato, balsamic, like appetizers at restaurants? Anyway, it seems like that would be good too. We're also going to chop some cilantro up. I'm just gonna do like half of it. Save the rest for later. But yeah, just dice that up. And that's gonna be part of this at some point too, which I love cilantro. Again, it's a thing a lot of people hate. So I guess if you're gonna try to make this, maybe substitute some of the things you hate for stuff you like. Like if you don't like cilantro, put gumdrops in it. If you don't like balsamic vinegar, put some Diet Coke in it. You know, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> a real cook would have had useful suggestions there, but uh, you know, we do what we do here. I appreciate you guys watching anyways. <laughs> Even with the lack of useful information. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna go grab our chicken and start getting into the chicken thing. All right, got my cutting board and my chicken. I have one uh, pound of chicken breast. I think the recipe is calling for two pounds. And because, you know, oh, this is in the way. Generally when I'm doing this sort of thing, I like to like slice the chicken in half, but this is not very thick. This isn't like, you know, your standard Walmart chicken that's huge. This spot's pretty fat. I don't know, do I want to slice it? What would you do? I could slice it a little thinner. I'm gonna, weird, I'm gonna just do two full-size pieces. That's what I've decided. Now, calls for four. Why am I doing two? Because it's 7 a.m. No one in my house is awake but me. A lot of times I have to do my cooking videos in the morning and then, uh, you know, if that's the case, I'll do smaller, smaller yields. But if you're making this at home for dinner, I would say at least four chicken breasts would be the way to go. We have to make like a little spice mixture first now that I've touched the chicken. So, whoops. Let me, uh, let me go wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's measure out the kind of spice mix that's gonna go on the chicken. So first we wanna take one teaspoon of smoked paprika, which guys, I found my one teaspoon measuring spoon. <laughs> Everyone's been complaining because I've been using a half teaspoon one. So we got one teaspoon of smoked paprika. We wanna also put one teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin into that bowl. We also want a quarter teaspoon of cayenne to taste. I'm gonna do like an eighth of a teaspoon because I'm a wimp, maybe a heaping eighth, but I don't like a lot of spice in my food. It can ruin a whole dish for me if I go too heavy on the spice. Then a half a teaspoon of coriander ground, which what is it even coriander? Oh, weird. <laughs> what does that smell like? I don't even know what that smells like. That's interesting. Then says salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know, like a half a teaspoon of salt. I hate when it says to taste. And then I'm just gonna grind a bunch of pepper on there until I'm sick of grinded pepper. Yeah, it's probably good. And I feel like I want more salt, so I'm gonna add that. And then we're gonna put the minced garlic into this as well. You know, the chopped up garlic we did earlier? That goes in there as well. Then we're just gonna mix all this up. This is gonna be like our spice mixture, I think, that goes on to the chicken. It doesn't seem like very much spice, so it might be good that we didn't do too much chicken. Yeah, so it says rub this mixture. Let's bring back Mr. Chicken here. All over your chicken. We're just gonna start by like kind of drizzling it on there. I, I can't even pinpoint the smell of coriander. What does that smell like? So it's supposed to go all over. So I'm just rubbing it here. All the garlic's coming off. Was it supposed to be garlic powder? No, it doesn't say garlic powder. It doesn't really want to stay on it. I'll just like reapply the garlic at the end here because it doesn't seem to want to stay. But over, do the same on this side. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, the smells are, I, again, it's maybe Christmas is what it's making me think of. Is this a Christmas spice or uh, Thanksgiving maybe? Is is coriander often used in Thanksgiving dishes? Let me know in the comments, guys. I guess I could ask Google or ChatGPT and find out. Gotta get it on the edges here. Runaway train never coming back. Why is that stuck in my head? Wrong way on a one way. This is a musical sing-along cooking channel. That'd be fun. There's a channel idea, guys. If anyone's actually good at singing, musical cooking sing-along channel. Okay, cool. So we're gonna move, we're gonna move ourselves over to the stove top and we're actually gonna start cooking this. We're not too far from it being done. Seems pretty easy. All right, so we're over at our little stove top here. We're gonna throw some olive oil onto a pan here, like so, and we're gonna let that get heated up a bit. I think our oil is pretty hot. We're gonna throw the chicken on there. I'm still feeling like this garlic was like improperly implemented here by ChatGPT. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it in there, like sitting on top of the chicken breast. But I think it would be better to use uh, garlic powder 
in the actual seasoning mix and then maybe just throw in some garlic when you're cooking everything else because this garlic could get burnt too. But I'm trying to stick to the recipe that ChatGPT provided. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So I'm just going to kind of stack it on top to save it for a little bit. We're supposed to sear this five minutes on each side, this chicken. Doesn't need to cook all the way through. I've made that mistake before with Marry Me Chicken. We're gonna cook it through in the sauce later, but we're gonna get a nice like crispy brown sear on both sides for five minutes at this stage. And then we're gonna take it off the heat. So let's let it go for a little bit and we'll be back. All right, so it's been five minutes. I'm gonna try flipping over this chicken and see if I burnt it. Yeah, I mean, actually it's kind of a nice little crisp on the spices that we got there. Do I need more oil? I feel like I'm low on oil, but eh, maybe not. So now I want to do five minutes on this side. Definitely a nice little crispy thing going on there. That looks really good, actually. So I, that's promising. I'm going to throw a little more oil in here. I don't want it to burn in the next five minutes. Maybe that's crazy of me, but that's what I'm going to do. Also, my garlic, I'm concerned about it burning. So, all right, let's let it go on the other side for five minutes, and then we come back and we remove it. I'm actually going to get my little thermometer thingy to check what temp it's at. All right, so it's been about five more minutes. We're going to take a look and see. I didn't burn anything. Hot dog. I mean, the garlic's definitely a little crispy. I'm concerned about the garlic. Have been from the beginning. I'm curious what the temp of the chicken is. It's uh, 120-ish, so nowhere near done. Drop that on the ground, no problem. I'm gonna take these off though and set them on a plate and set them to the side and then we're gonna add our veggies in here. So we're gonna add the sliced onion and the bell peppers and we're gonna saute those up in this same pan with all those spices and the garlic and so on and so forth. Again, I'm still like curious about the whole garlic roll in this, but you guys let me know what you think about the garlic. Cause like it's turning into little hard crispy burnt pieces. Maybe I should take out the garlic. It's just gonna like, I don't know. I'm not on board with how ChatGPT did the garlic. Every now and then I'll go ask ChatGPT during a recipe about something that's suspicious like this that seems weird and see what it says. Maybe I'll do that now. Let's saute these veggies up. Okay, so that's exactly what I thought. I should have went with my gut probably. When I asked it about it, it said, yes, garlic can burn very quickly and easily during the searing process. You may want to substitute garlic powder or garlic paste for the garlic or add the garlic later in the recipe. <laughs> this is literally exactly what I said. Uh, it says the garlic can add a bitter taste if you burn it. So I'm going to take some of the garlic out here. I don't know. Typical chat GPT messing up the recipe. So I'm taking most of the garlic out as best I can. All right, so this is pretty like soft or whatever. What is this supposed to be called? I don't know. Translucent, caramelized, a little bit caramelized. Not really, caramelizing takes forever, but it says five to seven minutes and it's been seven. So we're gonna call it ready to go. We're now gonna add our diced tomatoes, our sliced and half tomatoes. I also decided that now is when I'm gonna add a clove of garlic. I have diced up another clove of garlic because our first clove of garlic got burnt and I basically have de-garlicked the whole dish now. So I'm gonna add a clove here. I chopped up another one and add it in now and let it get nice and fragrant while the tomatoes are cooking and softening. And this is supposed to be like a one to two minute process here to get the garlic fragrant and the tomatoes softened up a little bit. Might lower the heat of hair. Now next we're gonna add a sauce or create a sauce. This is like a lot of veggies here, but you know, that's interesting. So we're gonna need balsamic vinegar, chicken broth, and some honey and some lime though. That should be good. Let me get the balsamic vinegar ready first. We're gonna want, well, let's start with the chicken broth. I feel like that's where we should start. We're gonna do a half a cup of low sodium chicken broth. Half a cup, low sodium chicken broth. Just measuring it out there, beautiful. And then we're gonna put in a quarter cup of balsamic as well, which I'm gonna use this measuring thing. That's a lot of balsamic, isn't it? A quarter cup. Seems like a lot. I gotta stir my veggies again so I don't burn them. Oops, I just lost a pepper. This doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough sauce, if I have to be honest with you, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and add it. Half a cup of low-sodium chicken broth, quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. Let's stir that up together. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of honey. I made the mistake of putting honey. Oh, I have some fancier honey. I wonder where that is. That would maybe be better. Should I go find it? Do I have time? I don't know if I have time. Let me try if I can find it fast. I didn't find it. I should have thought of it ahead of time. Oh well, I'll use it next time. So one tablespoon of honey goes in there as well. I need like a little more. I'm like almost out. Get out, honey. All right, well, we're gonna call it close enough. Get the rest out of the spoon here. There we go. Mix that all in. So it says bring it to a simmer, which we're doing now, and we're gonna let it reduce slightly. All right, now it's raining. This is the part of the video where it rains. <laughs> so this is gonna simmer and reduce slightly two to three minutes. Rain, rain, go away. I wonder how bad the audio will be. 
you know what, just, you know, well, it's ASMR cooking, right? That's a popular, popular niche. The ASMR, the sound of the water. I recently heard that most rain soundtracks you hear in movies are, it's not actually rain. What it is is frying bacon. Frying bacon is like what they use for the rain sound effects. All right, so let's say the sauce has like uh, reduced a little bit in about two and a half minutes. So now we want to take the chicken and nestle it in between the vegetables. Like so. We're doing some nestling here, okay? Like that. Should I put like some veggies on top of it? Is that crazy talk? Now I'm gonna try to add some of this uh, chicken juice back in there without getting all the burnt garlic in there. There we go. Reduce the heat a little bit. And then it says simmer together for five to seven minutes till the chicken is completed. We're just gonna let it roll and this is gonna be enchanting chicken, enchanting chicken. I'm not actually gonna leave the veggies on top of it because I want them to keep cooking too. And you know, aesthetically pleasing, not really functional. So we're gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna probably come flip it after like three minutes and I guess I'll just go enjoy the rain while we wait. All right guys, my chicken's still not done but all my sauce is gone. So I did ask ChatGPT what to do. It said add some more Chicken broth, remember I told you it didn't seem like enough chicken broth? Well, I was right again. I was right again, folks. And it said to add some more balsamic. So there's a little bit more of the chicken broth. Maybe I can do a little more. I just think they were way underestimating the chicken broth quantity. And let me grab some balsamic, a little bit more of that. Now, again, I think this also could have been resolved if I had sliced the chicken thinner, which is another thing I had been talking about. But I'm getting to that point where maybe I need to trust my instincts a little bit more than I trust the recipes, I say. Because, uh, you know, the recipes aren't perfect from uh, AI yet. I'm hoping there's a day on this channel where, like, every recipe AI makes is perfect and just good. But <sighs> they don't have a good track record yet. The other set thing it says we could do is add uh, a lid. I don't think I have a lid for this pan though. We're at 150 degrees on this and 150 on that. We're getting close, we're getting close. I think with all this extra sauce, we might be all right now. So let's give it a couple more minutes. So I don't actually remember when my camera died, but it did die at some point, but it's back on now. Basically what happened is we ran out of liquid. I think I got that on camera. I had to add some more chicken broth and balsamic vinegar. I probably ended up adding a whole nother cup of chicken broth and a little bit, a dash more balsamic. I didn't want it to become too balsamic-y, but now we're finally at a point where the temperature of the chicken is safe to eat, 165 degrees. It's been a while. Uh, if I had sliced the chicken in half, you know, it probably would have been much quicker, but this is what we have. It looks crazy, like a super thick glaze basically on the chicken. So I'm gonna add the chicken to a plate here and some vegetables. And I'm hoping this isn't like super salty, but this is what it looks like. This is the enchanted chicken from ChatGPT. It thinks it's gonna stand a chance against uh, Marry Me Chicken. It says to add a little lime, which is probably a good idea. So I'm gonna squeeze a little lime on it and a little cilantro. Now it also says you could use uh, parsley if you're a cilantro hater. So there's the finalized dish. Let me cut off a piece and we're gonna try it. All right, I got some pepper with it, some onion. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> That's actually really good. Huh. I got like a really juicy tomato in that bite. I got some cilantro, the onion, the pepper. I taste that little hint of lime in there, plus the balsamic. I'm a balsamic lover. Wow. It's really good. Really good. Is it as good as Mary Me Chicken? To me, personally, a lover of balsamic. This is very good and would make me just as happy as Mary Me Chicken, I think. But the creamy nature of Mary Me Chicken, I think the taste profiles is gonna be more like widely appealing. I think if you know you love balsamic vinegar, you should go make this right now. It's very good. I do love the explosion of the tomato too. Like when you cook a tomato right, a cherry or grape tomato, tomato whatever it is, it kinda explodes when you eat it. And it's like a very cool kind of like soup dumpling experience. I don't know. I love this. I think it's awesome. It was a little hard to make because I think ChatGPT underestimated the amount of liquid. I would just start off with more liquid. Um, so a little bit more, maybe a cup, cup and a half of the chicken broth instead of a half a cup because that, it, it all evaporated down on me and I was like in this urgent situation where I had to add more chicken broth, whereas I'd rather just add more chicken broth at the beginning to give it a little more time to cook, so on and so forth. This is great. I've been rating them out of 10. This is like, for me, because I love balsamic so much, like an eight, nine, an eight, nine out of 10. <laughs> There's my score on this. Again, if you like balsamic, if you like Marry Me Chicken, you should try this one. 
If you don't like balsamic, obviously this is not for you. Run as fast as you can uh, because it tastes very balsamic-y. You know, how many times can I say that word and do I say it right? I don't know. Thank you guys for coming over to the AI Kitchen today. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out some of my old videos. Bunch of great recipes on here and a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.